Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dental Digest with the Study Boards. In today's episode, we will talk about tuberculosis, a significant bacterial infection with its important oral manifestations. We will be covering its causes, stages, symptoms, diagnosis and the treatment, focusing on what dental professionals need to know. So let's get started. So what is tuberculosis? It's an infectious disease which is caused by bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And this bacterium is acid fast bacillus. Let's break it down a little bit further. What do we mean by acid fast? It means that the bacteria can resist being decolorized by acids during staining tests. Or in simpler terms, I can say that we can use uh, some special stains to identify this bacteria under a microscope. And this bacteria, it holds on to the stain even when it is exposed to acidic solutions. The word bacillus, it means that the bacterium is rod-like in shape. Talking about the transmission, it spreads through tiny particles in the air known as droplet nuclei. This is an important word, droplet nuclei. These particles are expelled whenever an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks, or you can say communicate with someone. So whenever a person nearby breathes in these particles, they may become infected with TB. Now let's talk about BCG vaccine. A direct question is asked, BCG vaccine is given for what? So BCG vaccine plays its role in TB prevention. BCG vaccine stands for Bacillus Calmed-Curin. And this vaccine, it is used to prevent tuberculosis, especially in countries where TB is common. However, unlike many other countries, BCG vaccine is not widely administered in United States. And the main reason is that risk of TB infection is relatively low in United States and the vaccine is not considered necessary for general public. Now for dental professionals, routine immunization against TB is not required in United States. Instead, dental professionals, they rely on other infection control measures which we will discuss further in this presentation. Now let's discuss different types of tuberculosis infections. Now TB can present in two main forms, that is a latent form and an active form. Now latent TB infection, in this infection, the bacteria is present in the body, but it remains inactive. And these people who are suffering from latent TB, they don't show any symptoms and they cannot even spread the disease to others. This is an exam question, whether a patient suffering from latent TB is able to spread the disease or not. The answer is no, they cannot spread the infection. But they are at risk of developing active TB later in life if bacteria becomes active. Now, to prevent this transition from latent to active, treatment is usually involving an antibiotic, which is isoniazide. This is an exam question because ultimately they will ask you to compare what will you give to a patient who is suffering from active TB and the latent TB. So with active TB patients, the bacteria is active and it is multiplying and that is the reason this patient is presenting with multiple symptoms and potentially even spreading the disease. Now, what are these symptoms? These symptoms include coughing, loss of appetite, night sweats, bloody sputum, that is you're coughing up blood, chest pain, fever, fatigue. Now, active TB can spread to others and requires treatment with a combination of antibiotics, which is going to be typically isoniazide, rifampin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. Now, if you compare it with latent, where we only gave isoniazide to the patient, and this is an exam question. Now, there are some other forms of TB as well, which you need to know, like lupus vulgaris, which is a TB that is affecting the skin. Then there is TB osteomyelitis, where the TB infection involves the bone. Now, let's read about infection control in dental clinics. Now, there are three main components of infection control. The first one is administrative control, that is implementing TB infection control plans, which involve written instructions to the patients and even educating your staff about TB signs and symptoms. Second one is environmental controls, that is using isolated rooms for suspected TB cases, using HEPA filters, and even using ultraviolet germicidal irradiation to reduce droplet spread. Third one is respiratory protective measures. That is, your staff should wear N95 masks when you're dealing with either suspected or confirmed TB patients. 
So patients should even be advised to wear surgical masks when they are in the operatories and you're not treating them at the moment. Testing for tuberculosis. The first test that you need to remember is TB skin test or tuberculin test or you can call it a small to test. This involves injecting a small amount of tuberculin into the skin and then you are measuring the in duration that is you are measuring the swelling size after 48 to 72 hours. Positive results of this induration indicates that the patient is suffering from TB while negative results means that there is no infection. The second test that you need to remember is regarding TB blood test also called as interferon gamma release assay. Now this test it measures the immune response to the TB bacteria in the blood and is preferred for its convenience and accuracy. The third one is Zeal Nielsen stain. You need not remember this from your exam perspective but it is a special staining technique to identify TB bacteria. Now let's read about patient considerations for TB. Latent TB. These patients can be treated under standard infection and control precautions. Now, any patient who is suffering from active TB, the treatment depends upon the urgency. So, any elective procedure has to be postponed and the urgent care should be provided in specialized facilities with appropriate infection control measures that we have already talked about. Now, let's read about inhalation and primary infection. So, inhalation of mycobacterium tuberculosis, that is, the TB infection begins whenever this bacteria is inhaled into the lungs. And then this bacteria settles into the alveoli where they are engulfed by macrophages. But after engulfing the bacteria, instead of being destroyed, it starts to multiply within the macrophages. And this is what results in primary TB infection. Now we have to understand what is Gon's complex. The primary site of infection in the lung is called Gon focus, which consists of inhaled bacteria that is surrounded by granulomas and that is undergoing caseating necrosis. This is important. What kind of necrosis is it undergoing? Caseating necrosis. And the infected hilar lymph nodes that are draining this lesion, they form Gon complex. Very important. So this is primary tuberculosis infection. Now let's study about secondary tuberculosis infection. So if the immune system cannot control the primary infection, it can become reactivated later in life which leads to secondary tuberculosis. And this results in a more widespread lung infection with cavitation. Understand? Lung infection with cavitation. That is important. Another type that we need to remember is miliary tuberculosis and this TB can spread through bloodstream which leads to a systemic spread known as miliary tuberculosis and it is characterized by tiny lesions which are remembering millet seeds. Now let's read about oral manifestations of tuberculosis. The first point is oral non-healing chronic ulcers. Now tuberculosis can present as a non-healing chronic ulcers in the oral cavity following up the lung infection. And these ulcers are usually painful and very deep. Often that is found on the tongue, but they can also appear on palate, lips, buccal mucosa and even gingiva. Second oral manifestation that you need to remember is tuberculous osteomyelitis, which is extension of this infection into the bones, especially in the jaws. Next is what is the lymph involvement and the complications that can arise from this. So infected lymph nodes which involve cervical, uh, submandibular, maxillary, they can become enlarged, firm and they may even form cold abscesses which is going to lead towards pain, swelling, pus discharge and sinus issues. Now next thing is there could be even spinal involvement by tuberculosis and which can cause a curvature of the spine that is known as POTS disease. This is important. Now let's read about the management of tuberculosis. Remember the mnemonic for this is going to be RIPE, RIPE, for the four primary drugs that are being used in TB treatment. That is R for rifampin, I for isoniazide, P for pyrazinamide and E for ethambutol. Do remember this and this is going to be compared with how you are treating an active TB patient and the latent TB patient who was treated only with isoniazide. So let's quickly recap the key points about tuberculosis. We talked about cause and transmission where we talked about mycobacterium tuberculosis which is an acid fast bacillus resulted in TB and it spreads through airborne droplet nuclei. Then we talked about BCG vaccine. Now this vaccine helps prevent TB but it is not being used in 
US. Then we talked about different types of tuberculosis infections that is latent TB, active TB. Then we studied about infection control in the dental clinics and we talked about different measures that we can take that is administrative controls, environmental controls and what are the different respiratory protective measures that we can take. Then we studied about the testing of tuberculosis that is we studied about Monto test, we studied about interferon, gamma release assay, we talked about zeal Nielsen stain which is a special staining technique to identify tuberculosis bacteria. Then we talked about different kind of oral manifestations that a patient can present with. And in the end, we talked about TB management, especially we studied about the mnemonic that is R-I-P-E, RIPE. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Dental Digest with the study boards. We hope you found this information on tuberculosis valuable and insightful. Now remember to subscribe to our channel for more insights into the topics that are frequently tested in your examination. Like this video and comment below with any questions or topics you would like us to cover in the future episodes. Stay tuned for our next episode and until then, keep learning and stay motivated. Take care.